I'm here with Jeff Hype from KHQ, and I'm going to let Jeff introduce himself a little bit. Um, he is, I asked him to do this because he is very involved in education and serves on some committees around Spokane and helps students get into careers that um, he thinks that by telling his story, it helps other students decide what they might want to do. So Jeff, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, sure. Yeah, my name is Jeff Height. Uh, my current title is Director of Recruiting and Training for KHQ. Um, and under that heading, we've got 10 TV stations that I help with. Uh, Spokane, Tri-Cities, Yakima, and then all over in Montana. So 10 TV stations total, three in Washington, seven in Montana. And with recruiting and training, I help find young, uh, a lot of times, but not always, uh, folks that are right out of school, um, that are looking to get their first job in the business many times as a reporter, as a photographer, as a producer, somebody that writes, maybe an anchor, uh, maybe that's somebody that does the sports or the weather, that kind of thing. So I help all of our news directors across the com company uh, find those folks that are uh, looking for jobs. Um, many times the people are newly graduated from college, um, but not always. Uh, sometimes um, they have a AA degree. Sometimes they have a bachelor's degree. Um, in TV production or communications or broadcast or journalism. Um, I've kind of seen it all over the years. So, yeah. So when you talk about that you're hiring um, people sometimes out of college, sometimes, well, out of college, two year, four year, having different experiences, what is something that really stands out to you when you're interviewing somebody? You know, um, in our business, so it's the news business, right? So we like people that are eager, that are energetic, that are curious about things, about how things work, why things work. Even as simple as when you're driving to work and you see something and you're like, oh, that wasn't there yesterday. I wonder what that's about. That kind of person that's just naturally curious, and naturally eager. The other thing with our business, um, it's very... Uh, it, it can be very unpredictable so that when you come to work, you never know what you're going to be doing today. Um, and that's kind of the nature of news in general. If you're in sales or you're if in accounting or, or if you're in a trade like an electrician or a plumber, you probably have a pretty good idea of what you're going to be doing today. I'm going to be wiring that house. I'm going to be doing the plumbing on that new house that's being built. But in the news business, you might come to work and think you're going to be doing a story about, you know, I don't know, a new, uh, a new building, a new business opening. And then something will happen and you're completely diverted to the, the kind of breaking news story that's maybe an hour, 90 minute drive out of town, that kind of thing. So it's very, um, it's very, it can be uh, kind of unpredictable. And we like people that are flexible, that are like, hey, yeah, I'm up for the adventure. Like, you know, I can, I can drive to wherever on the spur of the moment. You know, maybe it's, as you know, when you watch the news, it's, it's um, you never know what you're gonna see. Maybe in the summertime, it's a wildfire. Maybe in the wintertime, you're out covering the snowstorm, um, that kind of thing. So there's a bit of unpredictability to it. And some people like that and, and really enjoy that. And other people, it kind of depends on how people are wired. Some people don't like that as much. So when I was growing up, the news came on, you know, in the morning and then in the afternoon mm -hmm. and it's changed a lot because when something happens, if I look out there and I see, you know, an accident or something and, or a lot of um, police activity, I go to social media. So how has right. it changed in broadcasting even over the last 10, 20 years? Uh, great question. It used to be um, years ago, it was like appointment TV. And so everybody came to the newscast at 5 p.m. at 6 p.m. in the morning to find out what happened either overnight while you were sleeping or during the day while you were at work. Now you're right. As soon as you hear a siren or you see a, a something happening, you get on your phone and go to a couple of sites and you can pretty much find out what happened. Um, maybe not maybe not great detail, but you can find out what happened. So our, and we know that. So 
our deadlines went from being five and 6 p.m. to being like now. As soon as you can get there and you can get it on and you can get something posted to social media, do it because that's where people are. So, because we need to be where people are in on different platforms. So the difference at five or 6 p.m. then, we're hoping to do a longer story that gives more context about why this happened, more detail, um, the effects of the story. Um, there might be a, a story that here's the here's the basics of it the who what when where why you can find that on social media but now at five or six p.m we're going to give you the effects so this is this is maybe why this happened is this a bad intersection we looked up the records on this intersection and figured out why there's so many wrecks there we went out and timed the lights and it you know turns out the lights you know are not as long as they should be or as other intersections so we give it more depth um, in the newscast but you're right. The deadline is now now versus the deadline being on the next newscast. So if somebody was thinking they wanted to get into broadcasting, I know when we've done field trips there before, you showed us the big trucks that used to go out and you used mm -hmm. to have a reporter, you used to have a photographer, you used to have a writer, you used to have, and now it's kind of um, the roles have changed probably in, I know that you talked about sometimes you carry a backpack and that's what you mm -hmm. take to do in the news story. So yep. what are some of the skills that you're seeing now that students are coming out with to get into the industry? Sure. Um, photography, no matter what sort of device you're using or what technology you're using, good photography is still important. Like knowing what a, a good shot looks like. Is it framed well? Is it in focus? Is it exposed right? Are the people too light? Are they too dark? You know, it, it, how does it look? So good photography is good photography, no matter what. The other thing is writing. Uh, a lot of it has to do with writing and there's still a, a big emphasis on writing, on grammar. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's for, for our website or for a broadcast report or for a blog or for a, uh, a podcast, whatever. Um, you still have to know how to write well and write well quickly. So that's important. Um, and on the technical, I mean, it's kind of like people that are in front of the camera and people that are a little bit behind the camera. And sometimes you're right, sometimes it used to be a photographer and a reporter, and now that's one person. So they need to know how to do the photography, do the video editing, and they also need to know how to interview people and write well. So uh, people have become definitely a little bit more of a Swiss army knife, for sure. So we talked a little bit about education. Do you know of um, programs around this area that prepare students? I mean, if, when you're hiring, you're probably looking at certain colleges and programs. What are those programs and um, where are your employees coming from? So um, a, lot of the, a lot of the reporters and the multimedia journalists, um, it's still a bit of a requirement that they have a four-year degree because they learn so many things about journalism and what journalists can do legally and what they can't do legally and how they can get government documents legally and freedom, freedom of Information Act and what that means. Um, so, so the four-year degree uh, at, at a WSU, Gonzaga, Eastern, Whitworth, that's still important. Um, and we see a lot of folks from those programs. But we also, uh, whether it's an IT person, an engineering person, a photographer, they may come out of a photography program, maybe like a Spokane Falls, or maybe an engineering or an electronics program at Spokane Community College, that kind of thing. So, um, so we see generally those two, the four-year degree with the journalism or broadcasting um, or communication sometimes is a broader heading um, and then or the two-year degree for folks that are a little bit more on the technical side. So we have a large majority of our uh, students that want to be professional athletes mm -hmm. when they pick a career that they talk about. <laughs> so you talked about um, reporting on sports. Is that something that like somebody that's really um, interested in sports mm -hmm. is that profession that you see people going into it is it is and and uh sports isn't 
what I learned doing this job when I when I started talking to a lot of people on the phone and recruiting and talking to young uh, graduates that are looking for their first job, what I learned, which I didn't realize, sports is incredibly competitive in terms of getting a sports reporter job. So I'll give you an example. We'll have um, we'll have a reporter position open, and we'll have ten people apply. And it's like, okay, that's pretty good. We'll find a good candidate out of that pool of ten. We'll have a sports reporter position open, and we'll have fifty or sixty people apply. So it's it's funny that like everybody wants not everybody but a lot of people want to go into sports um and i get it it's fun you're at the game you're covering the game you're covering athletes you might be covering your idol the person that you know you're at in the spokane area you're at a gonzaga game and you're sitting on the end line and you're um getting video in the kennel and you are interviewing players in the locker room afterwards i get it i get the attraction um but it is incredibly competitive for those jobs, um, especially on the sports side. Um, and, and I do talk to folks that wanted to be an athlete, either at the college or professional level, and then something happened. They either realized they didn't have the, the skills necessary, or there was an injury involved, or they moved, or what, you know, I've heard a lot of different reasons, but then they decided, well, if I can't compete, um, now I want to cover it and I want to be around it. And, and that's just fine. I mean, that makes perfect sense because they have a natural kind of interest in that anyway. So, so I'm just looking back at my notes. Um, sure. I know that when I checked your LinkedIn account and we're getting students, you know, try to get them on LinkedIn because sure. um, people will go to that. And I saw that you started as a photographer and worked your way through, you know, up in the agency or in the um, company. What are mm -hmm. some things when you started out high school, college, that made you want to get into broadcasting? So back in the day, and I grew up in Spokane, so I'm a, I'm a North uh, Spokane guy, but back in the day, we had a pretty good TV production program in high school. Uh, I went to Shadle, and we even had a TV production, a little, little kind of baby one in middle school, or what we called junior high back in the day. So, um, so I actually got an interest in the whole thing early on. Um, and took uh, as many classes as I could in high school in TV production. We did a newscast daily at Shadle that went to everybody's homeroom. And, you know, maybe maybe some schools do that now, but talked about lunch and talked about special events and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then um, I uh, was also involved in stage crew uh, in high school. So that gave me kind of the technical part of lighting and how to how to be, you know, even how to use microphones and how to be quiet when somebody's performing and things like that. So that gave me kind of a different background on everything. Um, and then I took TV production at Spokane Falls. So I'm, I'm, I'm not that four year degree person. I'm the two year degree person. I took uh, TV production at Spokane Falls. And then I also have a degree in electronics from Spokane Community. So I actually went to college for five years all told. But, um, but then, yeah, I got, I got lucky enough to work uh, as a photographer, was my foot in the door job at KHQ, and then just kind of worked my way up from there, chief photographer, and then I was an executive producer, an assistant news director. This is all through the span of, of many years, but, um, and now I've been doing the recruiting and training for a couple of years. So yeah, it's been a great place to work. It's been a great career. Um, it's really fun. It's, and it's an adventure every day, you know, back when I was a photographer, um, again, you know, I never knew what I was going to do. I, the, I remember what, this has been a while now, but, um, 15, 20 years ago came to work like any other day. And there was a big earthquake in Seattle that day. Um, and got on a, they said, Hey, you're going to Seattle. And I got on a plane with a reporter and, um, flew to Seattle and rented a car and chased around and sh shot damage all over the area. And at the same time, our, our satellite truck guy, the big truck was getting on the road from Spokane. And so it took him five hours to get to Seattle, but we met up with him and did live shots for two or three days, uh, you know, quickly packed a bag and slept in a motel and 
or in Seattle for a couple of days and, you know, hadn't planned on that that morning when I came in. So, so that's just a quick example of, of kind of the fun and, and adventure side of it. So if we have a student here at West Valley or, you know, uh, this video is going to be shared with other schools, um, when things get back to normal, do you have mm -hmm. opportunities for students to job shadow or come in and see what you do in the studio? Absolutely. Uh, we have one day job shadows for high school juniors or seniors. Um, and that's one day and they can go out with a news crew and see what it's all about. Or if they're interested in the production side, they can stay in the building. Um, but it's usually either four hours or a full day. Um, and then for college students, um, and they have they have to be getting college credit for this. For college students, we have internships. And that's usually um, area college students, either in a broadcast, uh, a journalism or a communications program. And they get generally from one to three credits and they spend either a semester or a quarter uh, with us and maybe do like one day a week or four hours a week, uh, that kind of thing and, and keep coming in over that, that quarter or that semester. So we have that internship program and then we have the one day job shadow program, absolutely. So it's snowing outside. So Leslie Lowe is correct. <laughs> when she said it's going to snow. She called for snow. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who said it, but yeah, they were calling for snow. So okay. um, I'm sure that um, being on the weather crew, sometimes you get some hate mail. That oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Said. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With social media now, especially, you have to have kind of broad shoulders because people, yep. uh, people are not shy. No. <laughs> well, thank you for um, talking with us today. And sure. Um, sure. You know, I could be a contact person here at West Valley if somebody's yeah. interested um, once we get through the COVID and you, and um, hopefully we'll have more field trips there because that's always fun to go in and see the studio. Um, thank you again for you uh, participating in this interview. My pleasure.